Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing okay. So my next guest is somebody who's done loads of musicals. She's been in Mamma Mia, 42nd Street. Oh my gosh, so many shows. She's fantastic. Please take a listen to my interview with Welsh musical theatre performer, Steph Parry. So my first question for you is, where does your love of theatre come from? Oh, I think uh, when I was younger, when I was about 10, um, my mum and dad bought us tickets for Joseph. And um, that was my first experience of going to London and watching something. I think before then, I probably hadn't really seen much. I remember watching Lindsay Hately as the narrator and just being like, wow, that's that's a job I'd I'd like to do. But never really thinking that, you know, it was a job that I could do. But I think that's that's where it all began. That's where I I saw something different that I hadn't seen before and fell in love with it really yeah so yeah amazing and did you do any kind of like school productions or anything um yeah a few um like I remember in primary school I didn't um I don't think it was it was something that I kind of pushed to do because I never really I think I had to think started the understudying uh at a very early age because I remember (laughs) stepping in for Emma Hutchinson um, because she was unavailable uh, when I was about 10 to sing a solo. It was uh, in the Christmas nativity. Um, I can't, I'm just, I haven't ever spoken about that before, but I'm just remembering now that for one performance, I had to do it because I, I just think she was, she was, all, she always sang everything. Um, and there was that one time that I got to have a go. Um, and then it was probably only in secondary school then that I started to kind of think, oh, this is what I want to do. And I started going to dance classes and um, and then I did a few because my school wasn't a massive drama heavy school. Um, but we did a couple of we did like the Match Girls and we did Dazzle, the musical um, when I was about 13. And again, I wasn't meant to do it. It was meant to be somebody else because um, I think I decided really late. Oh, I'd quite like to do this. I'd quite like to join in. And then Katie was going on holiday to Florida or something, so she had to step down. So I stepped up. Brilliant. <laughs> I love it. You you were the go-to girl. That's it, isn't it. Yeah, that's 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 how I started young as that person who steps in for things. Amazing. And what was your training like? Um, so I went to Arts Ed um, in 2001. <laughs> um, so I left. So I'm from North Wales originally. So uh, if you're watching this in Wales, then uh, hello, Penandar, Bonadar, North Star, wherever you, whatever time it is in the day. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so I moved down to London when I was 19 um, and trained there for three years uh, in musical theatre. So I did a lot of dance training. I wasn't a, a massively confident dancer. <laughs> Still not. God, um, me neither. <laughs> so, yeah, did a lot of, it was quite dance heavy. You know, there was ballet um, three times a week, jazz most days and um and then you know did a lot of singing lots of um, acting and just and the great thing about our said was that they have such good connections within the business so um so we, we got to we, we we got to you know be taught by a lot of working professionals um which was a really good indication i guess of of, of what it would be like out there um so it just it feels like so long ago now because you know I graduated 16 years ago so wow. it's, it's mad because so, like for me I feel like training is is your drama school training and then you go out there into the real world and yeah uh, and you're still learning I'm still learning 16 years later there's still you know find myself in new situations that I go oh right yeah this is different this is this is something I've I've never encountered encountered before um so yeah, it's just uh, this business is just constantly learning, and now we're in a pandemic, and you know, we're having to adapt and learn in this moment too. Yeah, that's the thing. I guess I've spoken to a lot of people who've said that, like it's always ever changing, and also you're always learning. And once you've stopped learning, you have to kind of like question, okay, mm, you know, have I? Oh yeah, I, I, that, that's the thing. So I feel like when you stop learning, it's it's like when you die like you're just constantly constantly learning 
yeah it's just things there's just always something new and that's the that's the beauty of this business i think that's that's why we do it because it's because it's fun and because because it keeps you on your toes yeah you're never bored no yeah definitely and i mean even in this time right you know yeah you're not in the theater but i should imagine you're always doing something you are oh, yeah. doing stuff all the time yeah i'm doing i'm doing a 42nd street workshop this afternoon via zoom my first one i'm i'm terrified <laughs> which is it's ridiculous because it's new because it's like you know I'm thinking about will they be able to hear the music will I be in time with the music like all this all this new stuff that you're you know that you're that you just go I've never had to deal with this before so just yeah and I guess like when you're in a show you know you've got you kind of know what to do to the best of your ability and you've got all these other people doing the sound and the lighting and yeah. stuff and you're like well they they know what they're doing whereas when you have to do it all yourself you're like oh god what do I do yeah. ah. so I've been doing these Instagram lives um which I did my last one on Tuesday um and it just started as something oh, I don't know I think we didn't know what was going on and I was like I'm just going to get on Instagram live and sing, sing some ABBA um and that's how it started and it turned into like I do it twice a week and then for my last one, just um, just gone, like my sound went funny. I was dancing around and I knocked my laptop over and then it switched back to, I was in the middle of I Will Survive. I was dancing around, hit my laptop and then it started a Shania Twain ballad. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, normally somebody else, if, if something happens with the sound, it's someone else's fault. But like, <laughs> it's yeah. just like, oh God. Yeah, so it's, it, you just, but that's the thing is we're all just, figuring it out as we go aren't we oh, so God, yeah absolutely and um what was your first theatrical role do you remember after you finished um drama school what what did you do my first job at drama school was Rosalind and as you like it for a UK open air tour so I trained in musical theatre uh, and that's kind of that was my focus for for three years and then um I was actually somebody so from the showcase uh, which we do in March uh, I was one of the few people in my year who didn't get um, any agent interest. So I didn't have. Um, so it's funny because I've been speaking to a lot of graduates in this time. And one of their main things is they're so petrified of lack of representation, of, of ha not having an agent. And I'm kind of like, guys, that's exactly what happened to me. I had to work for myself for a year. Um, and so I just kind of, you know, got to work and I was like, right, I'm just going to put myself up for it anything and everything and found myself in Lincolnshire auditioning for for this for as you like it and apparently they'd they'd done like their rounds of auditions and they hadn't found their person who they wanted for Rosalind um and apparently I walked in the room and they were like she's she's the one and it's it when and, and it was weird like for for me to be you know going not really having any Shakespeare experience apart from a couple of monologues that we've done in drama school to then go to leading a Shakespeare play um but it was it was one of the best th like times of my career I absolutely loved it I worked with a fantastic group of actors and you know we, and it, it taught me a lot as well because going from kind of being in this training where you learn all about kind of what it will be like working in the West End where you've got people doing everything for you know you have the sound team you have dressers you have people kind of helping you with everything yeah. this was a tour around the UK where we had to put up our own set like outside um and we all just had to club to get club together and 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 get it done as a team and so I think for me that was kind of one of the best foundations that I could have um in my career just because it taught me the importance of, of being a good company member um and clubbing in with everybody and realizing that you know and literally finishing taking your bow and then you know then you got to take the set down, set down yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's like it, I, I just know I just feel like for those people who literally finish drama school go straight in like go straight into a show, go straight into another show, maybe play a lead in a show and da, 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 and then something like this happens, how do they then cope with it? Because they've had they've not had adversity. They've not had anything that's made them go, oh, ah. So I don't know, for me, I was like, it's one of the, one of the best things that, I think not getting an agent is one of the best things that could have happened to me. Yeah, 
Um, and it's been really good talking to graduates in this time and sharing that experience and being like, just because you feel like a bit, you know, it, it makes you feel like I'm a failure. It, 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 it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't yeah. mean anything for the long term at all. And that's great that so many years later that you can still look back on that and still reflect on that and still, like you say, give advice to other people who yeah. might be really stressing about it. Mm -hmm. Because I guess, you know, you're it's the path that you take, isn't it? You know, people say, well, if you want to go into musical theatre, you, you get you get yourself into drama school, then you get an agent and that's how it works. And when it doesn't work out like that, I think it is quite stressful. People go, yeah. oh, well, now what do I do? You know, nobody wants me. I've just done those years and that's it. And I'm done for now. Whereas that's yeah. not the case. Exactly. Um, tell us about your career highlights. Oh, I mean, I think one of, I think, well, so um, I actually found a, um, um, I, I, I found a notebook that I'd started writing in, um, in must have been a, must have been like 2012 and it was something along the lines of I sat in this ridiculous dressing room um like it was I think I'd gone with somebody um to do like a one-nighter thing and I was just waiting in the dressing room and the dressing room was the most amazing dressing room I'd ever seen in my life um and I found this notebook recently that I'd written and I'd been like one day I want a dressing room like this um and then I was looking at it the other day and I was like oh my god that's oh no I'm lying I'm absolutely lying it was a Facebook it was a Facebook post that I'd written saying I'm sitting in this dressing room and one day I want a dressing room like this and then that was like seven years ago or eight years ago and then a year ago was a picture of me in the number one dressing room in Drury Lane Theatre and I was like whoa that's like amazing I think for me one of my career highlights was when I had that two month stint as Dorothy Brock in in 42nd Street and that was the first time for me that I'd ever had like my name in in a, a West End program as the role uh, rather than the understudy. So that whole kind of the summer of 2018, where my career had things going on in it that I could only ever have dreamt of, which was when I ran down the road and saved Mamma Mia, and it all just went crazy with the press and then from that they then gave me Dorothy Brock for a couple of months that was like that was probably a massive career highlight because it was just like I don't know like like I say like what what dreams are made of and you just don't think it would ever happen to you and it did and it was like wow this is incredible yeah I mean tell us about that everybody still talks about that that day where you you know like People still still say it. People go, oh, my God, do you remember? Yeah. Madness. What was that like? I'm going to show you something now because my mate, because well, we're in my front room. Oh, I've got my shorts on. There we are. It's all good. I'm, I'm, I'm in the bedroom. It's fine. So um, this this was like a thing that my friend made for me. And it was like all like my press cuttings. Oh, my gosh. But, and like, and it's that so weird. Amazing. And she was like, that's not all of them. Um, So... <laughs> that just sits in my lounge that, that she made I was like oh, I'll share that while we're here because I couldn't normally bring this to an interview why not it's epic yeah so it was just you know I I just got back from holiday so that's this that's the weird the weird thing about this whole thing was that if it had happened a day earlier I wouldn't have been there um or you know and apparently the day before so so that day I'd been told that that Lulu wasn't feeling very well, who I was understudying um, at 42nd Street. So when my phone rang, I was just like, oh, Lulu's going off because she's not feeling very well. Um, but no, it was it, it was Mamma Mia down the road who um, who had an emergency and needed me to, to run down there and and take over. And, and yeah, it was just weird it, that. The, the show only stopped for 18 minutes and in that time they'd called me I'd gone down there they'd got me um dressed and ready and put me in a microphone and done my hair and and then I was on the stage um so there just was no time to think about it it was just like go oh my god yeah. I mean and so how how long between stints of you doing that show did you have so the year before, so that was 2018. So the whole of 2017, I'd um, 
spent playing Donna in Mamma Mia or Royal Caribbean. Um, I'd previously done it at the Novello um, in 2014, 13-14, where I was understudy Donna, Tanya, Rosie. Um, so, uh, so that was 2014. Then 2017, I played Donna for Royal Caribbean, and it was a slightly different version. The script was slightly different, choreography completely different. Um, and then... So, and then and then in February of that year, um, I'd been asked to go. Um, they'd cancelled a show on the Monday night and they got me to go in and do it on the Tuesday. And they just kind of walked me through, you know, reminded me of the differences on that that afternoon. Um, and then I'd gone on that night and then completely forgotten about it. And so that was six months previously. Um, yeah. So wow and I remember at the time think of, of on that 24 hour one being like well this is the craziest thing that could ever happen to me little did I know <laughs> <laughs> wow oh my gosh that's incredible and like you say because you didn't have enough time to even think about what was happening yeah. I guess you just like you know because yeah if you're told that I don't know for me I'd freak out a little bit and be like oh my god you know what if I don't remember it and like you say yeah. you've done a different version and what if, you know but when you don't have time and it's just like bang 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 you're doing it and let's just get it done there's yeah. no real time I guess you kind of the time you stopped was the time when everybody was stood there at clapping at the end and you kind of thought oh my god yeah I had, a I, do? <laughs> I had a moment in winner takes it all because that's like one of the last that's like the last big number before the wedding um and I remember just like I, I just didn't think I just didn't have time to think the whole way I just kind of rode the wave and then I was mid winner takes it all I suddenly just went oh my god like I just dipped out for a moment and was like this is crazy and I remember having this I remember having this thought in my head of, if this is the last time that I sing winner as Donna then this is a pretty epic moment like oh my life yeah um, Absolutely. yeah so that's kind of that's yeah and I remember thinking as well like oh my because I've not even thought about you know where my voice was in you know how, how what shape my voice was in or anything like it was just it was just weird it was just the, the oddest thing yeah but wonderful I was about to say but amazing that you did it yeah yeah oh yeah it was it was incredible and I'm and I'm so like grateful that I it, that I just happened to be in the right place at the right time yeah and that's what a lot of it's about isn't it you know I've talked to a lot of people and they say a lot of the time it's right place right time oh yeah massively it, it's just and and that's the thing I like I started it's this is gonna sound really like woo but um, I started having this um, philosophy that I walked through open doors that I've spent a lot of my career and there'd be a door open to me and I wouldn't walk through it because I'd go, no, I don't want to do that. I want to go this way. And there's this door that's open and I'm going, no, I see you open door. I'm too good for that. I'm going to bang on this window until it opens. Like that's kind of what I did for quite a long time. And then I, I started having this this weird like this philosophy that if there was a door open to me I'd walk through it um I guess that's a little bit like yes man with uh, Jim Carrey <laughs> yeah um but it's weird how that happened around the time of like the cruise ship so when when the when the cruise ship happened um when I got offered that it was around the time that I started being like this is an open door I'm not going to question it I'm going to just go and do it and then and then like 42nd Street happened and I was like another open door, another. And, and I just was like taking these open doors. And then if I hadn't have walked through these open doors, then that would never have happened. No. So it's so it, there's something in that about being open to the opportunities that are presented to you and seeing them and going for them and not letting the ego get involved and be like oh no I don't want to do that because you just never know where anything will lead you you don't know who you're going to work with you don't know what that might bring about how how you know they say the road to get to where you want to get to it's just not like that it's like this you just don't know where everything is going to lead yeah, so definitely husband in the background that's all right no, it's... <laughs> brilliant hello <laughs> <laughs> um 
<laughs> no, it's it's true though. I was saying this to a lot of people, like people say about um, you know, being kind to people and being nice to people and being yeah. decent human beings. You never know when that person that you shunned or that person that you kind of like who are you, you know, to look at me or ask me for something or talk to me or want something from me, yeah. you know, further up the line, you know, you might be there and they need something from you. And Yeah, I did a, um, in 2006, I did a really random job where I was um, the production singer for a, a Las Vegas style show in Taiwan. And um, one of my, there was, there was like 24 showgirls, six guys, and then I was the singer. And one of my male backing dancers in that show is now one of the top agents in London. And I'm like, you know, again, you just don't know. You do not, you know, that was such a random gig in Taiwan. And now he's, he's who he is. And you just, you, it just teaches you. It's just like, you just don't know. And it's, you've just got to be a good person, be a good company member, be a team member, be nice. Don't be a banana <laughs> yeah yeah you're so right and have you who has been the most amazing person that you've ever met somebody that you really wanted to meet that you've been fortunate enough to meet or somebody you really wanted to work with that you've ended up working with oh oh gosh oh oh that's oh god this is where I should have got the questions beforehand isn't it <laughs> really profound answer I mean, for me, I, I did the Pirate Queen recently, um, and Hannah Waddingham was was in that. Um, and Hannah Waddingham was somebody who I definitely looked up to when I was coming out of drama school as this kind of this Amazonian woman because I'm tall, and um, you know, and would spend a lot of the first few years of my career apologising for my height. And there was this woman who was she just didn't apologise for it. She was grand, and she was you know powerful and 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 I just would look up to her and be like oh, I want to be like her and then seeing her then go from the world of musical theatre and then she'd pop up in like on the telly and she and she was in the hustle um film with Anne Hathaway recently as well so she's just always been this person who I've kind of seen and admired and admired her career um and then to then meet her and work with her and be in the same rehearsal room as her and see that she's just so nice and normal and funny and um was really lovely and she was so she was so great to me as well and I think and she she's we talked about stuff like you know that like apologizing for for who you are and trying to play yourself down and she's like no never do that like and and yeah, so I don't know. I guess she's definitely somebody who I've l admired from afar for a long time, and then then to work with her was yeah, it was great. Epic. Yeah, I guess like in this time as well, you get to chat to people that you just wouldn't expect. You know, when when people, I guess you must get a lot of people. You know reach out to you and say oh my god you know I saw you in this and I you know all the time and mm -hmm. oh that's really cool and yeah that's that's must be really lovely. It is um it is when you get that when you I, I never take that for granted if somebody ever reaches out to me and says you know anything I I will always reply I mean I say this now I mean maybe one day I'll be very busy in Hollywood and I won't have time but <laughs> Right now, I'm like, I will always send you, I will always reply and I will always be grateful for somebody just taking a moment to, to reach out because it's, you know, lovely and they don't have to do that. Like, so, yeah. Um, and if you could paint your ideal day that you could do whatever you wanted to do in a day, what would you do? What would be your day? Oh, I'd, put, I'd get up and I would there'd be a gym session in there straight away there'd be some kind of work with a barbell <laughs> going on um then there'd be some brunch involved because I love brunch um and then it would it would probably be like I'd probably want to be on set like I, I, I I'm a real lover of, of of acting um and you know screen is something that I'm completely drawn to um and so yeah, it would be I'd be on set playing some fabulous role, and then I'd go home and probably have a really chilled out night 
with the husband um, watching some a film or something like that, really. It, it would probably be very, very tame. Um, yeah. And it would prob- there would probably be work involved in there because I love it so much. Yeah. yeah, it is honestly. It's it's the stuff that it just lights me up. It's it it's I find it fun and I don't know. I it's like it's just like we all have like a purpose and we all have that thing that drives us and and I don't know. Just just like lifts you and I just feel for me like when I'm acting, when I'm performing, it's just when I'm at my most happy i guess yeah awesome and um if you were a zookeeper what animal would you look after i mean it's not an, in a zoo and i'd probably be too scared to because i mean for me it's all about the cats i love a cat okay. um, so then if it was a zoo it'd have to be a big cat wouldn't it and um and i'd be too scared to do that so if you could have some little house cats there i'd love uh, kittens I, i'd be if we could have a kitten section in the zoo <laughs> Be all over that, and that's weird because I know that there's like a lot of dog people are like, oh, cat people, but I just, I just love cats. And I mean, I mean, my cat hates me. He's the oh. most antisocial like being ever. Oh, husband's making a, a, a smoothie in the background. If you can hear that, I thought that was the cat. No. I thought, oh my god. Yeah, no, no, I don't know where the cat is. He's he's the most antisocial thing. Unless he wants feeding, that's the only time I get his attention. Um, but I absolutely love him. Uh, but I, yeah, and I think maybe if I gave him a little bit less attention, maybe I'd get more. I don't know. I need to treat him, oh, yeah. keep him oh, Cats are very complex creatures. They are. And do you have a favourite TV series or um, film, mm. genre of film that you like? I'm, uh, I am much more TV than than film. Um, I love Line of Duty. Okay. I anything crime police drama I am so into it it's like I just I love it I get so excited by any kind of like British British crime drama yeah it's the best like for me I just love it so um so I've recently done I did a bit of filming for um Unforgotten which is another favorite of mine so it was like a massive kind of I don't know a bit of a dream come true really being involved in it so uh but I think if I was to get a role in line of duty I don't know what I'd do with myself <laughs> you'd be gone you'd be like ah! yeah I'd probably be they probably would never give it to me because I'd be that fangirl like running around me oh my god I can't believe I'm here I'm playing a police officer I, can't, I just want to play a police I want to put a police uniform on so bad <laughs> I should hire one you uh, should yeah I want to be you a should. detective or you should stuff. do like self tapes in 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 gear. Yeah. Well, I've, I've I've got my like police self tape, um, which is basically a white shirt and a coat. <laughs> if I ever have a self tape for a police officer, then I I will always give a little bit of a nod of like this is my I'm giving it police officer right now. I love it. Brilliant. Yeah. And my last question for you is what's next for you after lockdown? Do you know what you're going to be up to? Well, hopefully, uh, back to Mamma Mia the party, um, all being well. Um, obviously, no idea, no idea when, how, um, but that's that, that's what all being like. Hopefully, we, we'll be back. I, I'm pretty sure we'll be back, um, but obviously, I, I can't. None of us can be sure about anything at the moment, um, but that's the hope and hopefully sooner rather than later but that's what's next for me really is is going back to that um I did actually book a commercial as well before lockdown happened so uh no idea when that's being filmed um but I think just I'd like to so I so I've been doing loads of like work with graduates um I just for me I was like I need to do something with my time I can't just sit around so I just offered out one-to-ones um, with grads and was just like anybody who just wants to get on zoom we can have a chat um I did loads of one-to-ones I did a few group ones um and and I found that really inspiring and really um 
I don't know, just just gave me a bit of purpose, I think, in this time. Um, and then now Industry Minds have set up this graduate programme. So I'm going to be doing more work with them next month. Um, and I think it's just something I'd like to continue. I think it's something I'd like to continue every year. I'd love to be somebody who grads can come to. And if they're feeling like, you know, they're a bit scared, I guess, to get out there. I mean, at this time at, at the moment is probably one of the worst times you can possibly go out into this business. Um, but I feel like every year there's, there's worries, there's concerns. And if I can do anything just to help them realise that, you know, this, whatever's going on right now, it doesn't set your career. You, you know, you can, you are in charge and you can approach things how you want to. Um, so I definitely think that I would like to continue that work for as long as I can. Yeah. Um, that is like... I'm, that, I'm just literally kind of saying that's what's next for you I'm like well that's 2021 so <laughs> next, I'm glad they're ready to come out no um, but it's nice though isn't it it's nice for people to have somebody that they feel that they can talk to that has you know has been there and has done that and I think yeah you just I think you just automatically presume that people who are within the industry you know that they, they've done that and that they don't really want to then go back and, and talk about it and they've, they've, yeah. they've built themselves up and you know they're like well I'm happy with what I'm doing now so it's nice when people go actually you know no I will help you and I will right. listen to you and yeah oh more than happy to well thank you so much for chatting with me today no problem Fab. it's been great yeah thank you for having me no worries and um I will let you know when it goes up I'll send you the link I'm, I'm really hoping that everybody else can see you properly and not just in a blink so if if I've been I've had no idea where to look this whole time because you have been frozen in a blink for this whole 30 minutes <laughs> I can't believe that you poor thing having to look at that face no I mean like that. it's just like you know when you kind of like find yourself being like I don't know where to look <laughs> yeah. oh, well you've you've not been frozen the whole time good okay. and are you not your end so you're moving no okay. I can see me fine so hopefully when it's recorded, you will you won't be in a blink. Yeah, that will be a really attractive thing for everybody to look at for thirty five minutes a of it. Uh, oh, great. So you, so you can just see, you can just see what, what, what it was. Oh god! Oh, god. oh lovely! That's attractive. <laughs> oh dear. Well, thanks so much, Steph, and I'll um let you know. I'll send the link when it comes up. Perfect. Love to meet you. I know. I'm. I'm so sorry about the face. Oh, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, give my love to Wales. Oh, I will. I will. Yeah. And when we get back up and running, it might be cool if, if you're still. Um, I mean, because like we don't know when things are getting up and running. I might be up and running before you. Who knows? Um, we could maybe do like a little Zoom thing with the kids. They'd love that. Right. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Fab. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Huge thank you to Steph. Another amazing interview. I don't know what's happening. They just keep going and going and going. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. Lots more guests still to come. Take care of yourselves. Hope the sun is shining where you are. Bye.